a town hall update on assisting the homeless population of Oakland on Friday, July 21st at 6 p.m. at the J. Alfred Smith Senior Fellowship Hall. This event takes place at 8501 International Boulevard in Oakland. For details, call 510-544-8910. The community calendar is produced by members of the First Voice Apprenticeship Program. Send your listing at least four weeks in advance to KPFA, Box 51-1929, Martin Luther King Jr. Way in Berkeley, California, 94704. Or email us at calendar at kpfa.org. Tell us if your event is wheelchair accessible. To hear this calendar again, call 510-848-6767, extension 621. This calendar is also online at kpfa.org. Good evening. You're listening to 94.1 KPFA in Berkeley, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K248BR in Santa Cruz, and online all the time at kpfa.org. It's 701. Up next, Full Circle. Stay with us. Welcome to another episode of Full Circle, where tonight my co-host and I will guide you through the history of cumbia. Cumbia evolution down to our local exploding cumbia scene and into your tympanic membrane. Stay with us as we show you the progression of cumbia as it is represented here in the Bay Area, which in here on Full Circle, we are your host, Laura Chegaray. And I am David de la Gran. Tonight, we are exploring that wonderful dancey vibe known as cumbia, its origins, and why it is that whenever it plays, you cannot help but get up and dance. We will listen to the different varieties of cumbia, and we will talk to the artists themselves, who will deliver the story of how cumbia made it to the East Bay and the explosion of cumbia that is sweeping the country. Melodía Celeste by El Combo Celeste. Thank you. 
Cumbia is the most widespread rhythm in Latin America. You can hear cumbia all the way from the U.S. Latin stations to the Patagonia and the South Pole. In fact, the Uruguayan scientists in Antarctica often listen and, of course, dance to it. Let's listen to a couple more selections of Roots Cumbia. These beats are easy to relate to. Hope you have your dancing shoes.
Welcome back. You just heard a few selections of original cumbia from Alberto Pachuco y su conjunto performing Sembrando Café and the group Gaitas y Tambores de San Jacinto with their hit Sabor a Gaita, the flavor of the gaita, better known by the locals as No es Negra es Morena, which roughly translates as she's not black, she's colored. Morena is a euphemism for the word black. <laughs> that cuts deep. And now, Laura is going to tell us a bit about the origins of cumbia and how its dance step has evolved over the years. Sit back and take a listen. When you think of Latin music, especially in the Bay Area, you probably think of salsa or Mexican ranchera. But cumbia music can be heard anywhere from Canadian and USA radio stations down to the southernmost point of Patagonia. Cumbia's first musical chords date back to the late 17th century in the Caribbean coast between Colombia and Panama. Many believe it first emerged in the Pocabuy country, an indigenous area that extends along the upper valley of the Magdalena River. The name cumbia comes from the word cumbe, which to this day still is a dance form in New Guinea. The cuisis or indigenous flutes of the Kogi people were renamed gaitas by the Spaniards due to their resemblance to their European instrument. The history of Latin America itself is imprinted in each and every part of cumbia. The earlier dance was probably a courtship between Afro-Colombian men and native Colombian women. Men tried to lure women towards them, and the two spin around and then apart from each other. Many see this as a symbol of the ethnic mixture which was looked down upon by the Spanish colonial society. In its original form known as Cumbia de Gaitas, Cumbia melody is played with two gaitas or flutes, la hembra or female that plays the lead, and the male gaita or macho that plays the supporting notes. To mark the rhythm, they use a big seed field gourd called maracón and three African drums, the bass drum or tambora, a secondary mid drum or el tambor alegre, and a small calling drum or el llamador is also used for the back beat. This style was made famous by the Gaiteros de San Jacinto, a group formed in San Jacinto in the Colombian Department of Bolivar and have been active since 1940. In 2007, the group won a Latin Grammy Award in the Folkloric Music category for their album Un Fuego de Sangre Pura, which has reignited interest in cumbia roots. Within Colombia, Cumbia continued to change when Colombian vallenato musicians who play another traditional rhythm replace the gaitas with their accordion to play cumbia. In the 1950s, Colombian's record companies, Discos Fuentes, began recording cumbia artists, and with that new technology, the genre began to expand and incorporate other influences. In Peru, we have musica chicha or psychedelic cumbia, In the late 90s, Argentina received a wave of Peruvian and Bolivian immigrants. A slowed-down version of La Cumbia Chicha became known as Cumbia Villera, or Shantytown Cumbia. Cumbia is also one of the most popular sounds of Mexico today. It started in the mid-1940s when Colombian cumbia musician Luis Carlos Meyers Castaner moved to Mexico and recorded the first cumbia outside of Colombia. La Cumbia Cienaguera. In Mexico, the music scene was dominated by what they call tropical rhythms. Cuban rhythms, such as mambo, rumba, and guaguancó, gained more diffusion thanks to the newly booming Mexican film industry. And so, from Mexico, Cumbia went back to the rest of Latin America, along with a heavily Cuban-influenced dance step. If you're a salsa dancer like me, you will recognize that the difference between modern cumbia step and salsa is a little extra kick on the fourth beat. 
One, two, three, kick. 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 You just heard a great summation of a movement that has been ongoing for over 250 years. There is much to uncover as we delve into the cross-cultural blending and the resistance that lies within the music. Thank you to our resident apprentice, Laura Chagaray, for your contribution. Like I said in my piece, the psychedelic music took over in the late 60s, early 70s, and cumbia was not exempt adapting from the hypnotic elements of the psychedelic movement, which derived their musical influences from many traditions. Let's take a listen to a track by Los Mirlos off the album The Roots of Chicha. This song is entitled El Milagro Verde. <laughs>
And welcome back to Full Circle in KPFA 94.1 FM. The last track you heard was a porro, which is the brother or near cousin of cumbia. The name is Porro Bonito by Orquesta Ritmo de Sabanas. Now, in chicha music, the pentatonic scale, a five-note scale, famous for its use in blues music in the United States, is a staple of chicha music in Peru and in much of the Andean world. Now, cumbia has always been the music of the lower class and therefore the voice of their resistance, exemplified in the ability of people to carry forward their musical traditions and the spirit which makes their humanity so joyful and authentic. As we will learn from this next segment, cumbia is a melting pot of different cultures and the Bay Area is the place that shares this dynamic characteristic. A resident apprentice, David de la Gran, has been involved in the cumbia scene here in Oakland, and he has a front row seat for the resurgence of this musical style. Let's listen to his presentation of Cumbia de la Bahia. Cumbia! Hey, what do you guys think about the cumbia scene, like, starting up out here? More of that. I'm into it. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful thing. We need more we need more music like that out here. Cool. What's your name again? Mayra. Mayra, Mayra from Sacras. So you're up in Sacras, right? You they have a lot of uh, cumbia up there too? They don't, and that's what's like trips me out because I've been wanting to dance Sonidero, you know, go somewhere where they dance nothing but that, but no, they don't have nothing over there. So I had to come all the way to Oakland. <laughs> Uh, what's your name, bro? My name is Jorge Gonzalez. Uh, I'm from South Central Los Angeles. But I've been in uh, Oakland for about 12 years. Uh, the reason why I like cumbia is because it reminds me of home. Um, it's one of those sounds that goes back, way back to when I was a little kid. And I remember seeing the like the old couple in the wedding or the quinceañera. And they're like hardly moving, but they got the beat right. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and and you know you're looking at them like, I want to I wanna be like them when I'm getting old. I got Jesse, Jesse Medina. Bro, I see you at all the shows, man. You're an avid supporter, man. Like, what brings you out to these shows, bro? Absolutely. I mean, I I believe there's a cumbia scene happening here in Oakland. I mean, I see them at Lake Merritt. I see them at First Friday. I mean, the cumbia scene is just happening. It's blowing up. And there's just events happening just about at least twice every month. Uh, Cumbia Jam can break out anywhere. It doesn't matter if it's Lake Merritt, San Francisco, Dolores Park. It can just break out anywhere, and that's that's Cumbia, man. It brings people together, the Cumbaya. From the mouth of a true fan, man. Gracias, Jesse. You know, my name is Alex G. O's, people call me as O's, O's One. Pues I grew up, you know, number one in this, in this cultura. So a couple of things bring me here. Not only the music. Music is first of all because that's what we're about. You know, we've been, I'm from Los Angeles. So allá también, you know, we have the same estilo. We have the same modality. But here it's more important because of gentrification. You know how gentrification has been sort of colonizing the ways in which people live. And so, and I come to support, you know, these people, you know, our people, our gente to, uh, you know, not only just make it, but, you know, because they're already doing the best, you know, they're making it, but at the same time showing them, like, you know, that's, that type of resistance, you know, it's like, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, aquí estamos, you know, and there's a lot of us just here to support the movimiento. It, it is about cumbia, but it also is about comunidad, you know, and it comes down to supporting our comunidades, you know, there's a lot of people here, for example, that have been danzantes, you know, there are people here who are community activists, I mean, I see them, I can just point them out right here, just talking to you, you know, uh, and so, but we're all, you know, in esa onda, you know, it's like the, the, the homie El Gavilán says, la onda bajita, you know, this is what it is, you know what I'm saying, this is what we're talking about, man, it's la onda bajita right here, you know, we're keeping it low, we're keeping it peaceful, we're keeping it firme, but at the same time, time you know we're keeping it resistance you know we're keeping it pushing and it's like this is our presence my name is david de la gran i'm a servant of the great muse and i traveled to the bay area in 2013 with the sole intention of producing live cumbia music 
When I arrived, I was surprised at what I found or didn't find. But I set off, and after a few trials, I happened upon some players at the lakeside sessions of Lake Merritt. The story starts here, with all the people that I met along the way. This is a snapshot of how the cumbia scene came to be here on Ohlone land, the Bay Area, as told by those who have been a part of its inception and propagation. We start with Bobby Ganoush. Bobby is a local musician and party promoter who's been working in the Bay Area for the past decade. We talked about the cumbia music scene, the artists, booking gigs, and the way that it's grown. Um, how high and low do you have to go to find find some cumbia acts? Um, not too far because I work locally and I work with uh, crews and uh, you know DJ circles and musicians that I've already built a relationship with. So I reach out to those friends and uh, put together shows accordingly. Nice man. Did it take a Did it take a while to like to build up um, like the scene as it is right now? I mean, like how was the like the process of getting that started? There's like an ebb and flow, I think, with that kind of thing. And um, at first, you know, we started doing parties about eight years ago as International Freak Out of Go-Go. And they just kind of popped off. But then we started having live music and integrating more uh, Latin artists, bands that are doing like Afrobeat and stuff like that. So that kind of grows, you know, and it, like I said, it ebbs and flows. You know, I think that there's ups and downs. But right now I, th I feel that, it, that it's growing and I think that it's exponentially getting bigger. There's a huge community in that music, so I feel like it's just going to keep growing. And uh, right now we're getting more and more spaces to do this sort of thing. And I think that's one of the things it relies on is the spaces that are available for everybody. Nice, man. How many other like uh, organizers or events or producers um, do, 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 you, do you know are working on kind of like the same, this building the same community uh, off the top of your head? Um, you know, there's people down in San Jose like Sonido Clash. Um, in L.A., there's the Orale guys, uh, Victor and uh, Bob Hernandez. And up here, we have Chulita Vinyl Club and the International Freak Out of Go Go that I've mentioned. So all these crews are kind of coming together and bringing music, you know, whether it's uh, live cumbia or it's on vinyl or even on computers and remixes. Um, you know, you got Super Ritmo over in the city with Cool Kyle and uh, Raw Your Moss. And the Discos Mas label, I think, is very important in that aspect because they're bringing, you know, music to vinyl and preserving, uh, like, another cultural aspect of the music. So it's, it's to me, that's the immortality of, of music and life is, is being preserved on the grooves of a record because those things, like, turn up, you know, years and years later and they can, you know, uh, remind people of what was going on at a certain time and a certain point. I also spoke with Oakland musician and personality Jose Rivera. He laid down some of the history of cumbia and its presence in the Bay Area. Basically, cumbia started uh, hitting Central America in the in the 50s and 60s, and it started hitting Mexico in the 60s and 70s. And um, the immigrants that were coming here to uh, California were bringing... Um, we're bringing cumbia with them because it's what they heard back home. And in the Bay Area, I would say the early cumbia scene started in the 70s with mostly Central American bands like Los Supersonicos, Marianado, Mike Dag's band, Raza Poder, because he was a musician. So he was involved in, in cumbia back then. But you got to understand, at that time, cumbia was like the music of the recent immigrants. The Chicanos and the people that were here in the Bay Area... They weren't into cumbia that much. It was kind of like the parents' music. They were more into, like, Santana. They were more into salsa, you know, into Malo and Fania All-Stars. And that was kind of more like the end, the hip thing at that time with Chicanos and people that were here already. Uh, in the 90s, there was a group called Los Compas, and it was uh, ran by a guy named um, Mi uh, Mi Miguel Govea. And it was like a salsa band, but they also did a little bit of vallenato and a little bit of cumbia. So that was in the 90s. And um, the first time I ever seen uh, a traditional Colombian cumbia band was in the, in the early 2000s, like 2002, 2003, somewhere around that time. And that was a group called Tambores de Colombia. And Tambores de Colombia started in 2001 by Ramiro Bernal, John Jairo Rondan, and uh, Mario Vinasco. They were the originators of that group. They were the first 
traditional Colombian band that I know of in the Bay Area. Not too long after that, I went to a Son Jarocho event in San Francisco. This was about 2004, or five, somewhere around there. And Patricio Hidalgo and his old group, uh, Chuchumbe, were playing at the Mission Cultural Center. And the group that opened up for them was the Vallenaco Cumbia group that I had no idea existed. It was called Lado Oriente. And I was like, wow, who are these guys? They were playing Vallenaco with an accordion, you know, and um, it was just awesome. Like, wow. I, I didn't even know there was groups like this in the Bay Area. So now Tambores de Colombia, Lado Oriente. All right. This is David de la Gran, and I'm together here with Ivan from Lado Oriente. Well, Ivan, I wanted to start off telling you, um, welcome back to the cumbia scene. Yeah, welcome back to the music scene here in Oakland. I, I understand that you had a, a, a quite a hiatus. Yeah, somewhat, somewhat. It's been probably maybe close to seven, eight years since I last, you know, since La Colectiva, which was, you know, the last group I was really a part of, um, kind of uh, went their separate ways. So, yeah, I'm definitely excited to be back and, and looking forward to, to bringing something uh, cultural and uh, something culturally relevant and uh, educational to the people here in the Bay Area once again. Nice, man, because I know you guys are originarios, you know, you guys are veteranos of the of the exactly. music scene here. Exactly, you, you got it right. We've been uh, basically as dedicated my musical career to, to playing, you know, traditional music from uh, Latino America, primarily cumbia, you know, since the early 2000s, since I was a youngster, you know, 2001, 2002, bringing that to the folks in the Bay Area. That's fantastic. Yeah, because from what I hear, there is a little bit more of a what I call a folkloric sound to Lado Oriente. Um, Definitely. Yeah, like, well, what's what's the backstory on this? Like, why why are you bringing this to the forefront? Because I, I think we've gone so far away from from uh, from the roots and the commercialization of Latin music has gotten to the point where where we play traditional formats and people think it's something new. It's because we're so far away from the root that it's seen as something new and innovative, when in reality, it's something that's always been there and has just kind of fallen by the wayside. That was Ivan from Lado Oriente, and now back to Jose. Fast forward to about 2005, six. I went to an event at um, the Elbow Room, and it was two groups. It was a group calling itself La Colectiva and a group calling itself Aluna. Aluna was a band that started that was started by Virgilio Guevara and Adley Penner and um, uh, Dan Yaki from La, La Candelaria was in that group as well. He was the bass player. That was the first Gaitero group that I had ever seen in my life. I had heard a lot of Gaitero music from Toto La Moncocina, Gaiteros de San Jacinto. But that was the first time I'd ever actually seen a group live. And it blew my mind. I mean, it literally blew my mind. I, I didn't even want it to stop. I was like in a trance. Like, oh, my God, this Gaitan drum combination is awesome. Like, I, I, I tell Adley, the, the, one of the Gaiteros of that group, who was one of the baddest white boys on the Gaita, let me tell you. I tell him to this day that, um, that watching them, watching him playing tambora inspired me to want to play the tambora. That's right, man. Um, I'm, I'm here with Adley of Bicicletas por la Paz. What do you think about the cumbia scene? It's been a part of Oakland for a while. It feels like it dropped out, and now it's coming back, man. Like, you know, how do you how do you feel like you know being a part of it? I 100% agree with that statement. Um, but now I feel like in the last year, two years, it's just really been increasing. Cause people are like, oh, this is a really easy rhythm to relate to, and I can dance to it, and it just feels good. You can literally play it all night. And people just want a groove. It's great. I love it. I'm happy about that, and I hope it stays here forever. And we're here at Lake Merritt, and you're, you're telling me right now that you wanted to do, like, a steady function here. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, basically, I mean, the lake traditionally has drummers of all backgrounds, you know, funk, samba, cumbia, whatever. And uh, I studied Colombian music for two years when I lived in Colombia, uh, afro Colombian music in particular. So I want to start bringing that out because there's a huge interest for this this type of music. Colombian uh, rhythm stem are they they stretch much further than just cumbia. There's cumbia, puya, mapale, tambora, garabato. There's so many rhythms. So I think it'd be really great to get all these people and all the Colombian community together to to play these rhythms around the lake on Sundays. That's my vision. Nice, man. Tell me about the vision of your band, uh, Bicicletas por la Paz. How long has it been going on? 
Uh, we've been together for about three, three and a half, four years. Uh, the vision of the band was, I'm a bike tourist, I tour by bike, and I wanted to have a band that toured by bicycle, so we are a bike touring band that plays a fusion that we call Latin Circus Funk. That's our style of music, and we... Uh, we bring everything by bike. We even have a pedal-powered sound system, so we get the audience to pedal, and that creates electricity for a sound system. That is wild and innovative, man, and so cool, dude. Like, fresh yeah. for the Bay, man. Yeah. Fresh for that Bay, dude. Adley of Bicicletas por la Paz. Gracias, man. Thanks for being with us, bro. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate it. I love KPFA, too. Amazing, amazing radio station. started having DJs who were playing cumbia. DJs like uh, Cool Kyle, Rock Your Mas, DJ La Niche, DJ Roldan, you know. And DJ Lautaro. And DJ Lautaro, oh, yeah. We, we we got DJ Lautaro into cumbia because he would come check us out uh, and see us jam. Then he started researching cumbia, and then he also knew Cool Kyle, who was another DJ who was doing cumbia. DJ Lautaro, DJ Rhythm, as we know him. And um, you started having them making cumbia scenes as well. Yeah, most folks know me as DJ Rhythm or Selector Rhythm. Longtime DJ from Berkeley, Oakland area. Holding it down since uh, 1991 on, on the vinyl, the rare groove. And then and then you got into Cumbia. How'd you get into Cumbia? That was much later I got into Cumbia. It took me, a, it was a path, man, it was a path. It was, because uh, it was kind of more like a gradual thing. I got, I got it in doses and like, Little by little, I started hearing the really good stuff, you know, because I don't feel like, you know, there's certain styles of music. You kind of have to search for the really good stuff or someone has to turn you on to it. It's not just going to fall in your lap necessarily. And uh, that's the way I feel about Cumbia. It was like I got really I got into it. And the deeper I got into it, the more good songs I heard and was like, oh, and it has, you know, one thing, one thing that I was, I, I've been thinking about. Cumbia is that uh, it has so many elements that I like. It has a lot of the elements of other styles of music I like. There's jazz in cumbia. There's funky cumbia. There's there's uh, you know skanky kind of rock steady sounding cumbia. Uh, you know what I mean there's so many styles of cumbia that I, when I first started hearing it, I realized like wow, it, it encompasses so many of the things in music that I love. It like brings them all together in new in new combinations I never heard. DJ Lautaro also plays the Huacharraca Colombiana. Tell me about the locations of where Cumbia has played. Some of the venues. Well, the most famous venue is uh, La Estrellita, at least in Oakland, because La Estrellita is where a lot of Cumbia groups played or started playing. La, La, La Estrellita is a restaurant on the corner of 5th Ave and East 12th Street in East Oakland. And it's a restaurant that's been there since the late 60s. And uh, they've been having music there since the 80s. But Cumbia, it, it kind of became the epicenter of Cumbia in the 2000s, in the early 2000s. And it kind of had died out for a minute. But again, we brought it back. So now now Las Creita is a happening place. There's like an event there every week now. Well, I, 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 before us, I, I, I'll give credit. There was a group, uh, an organization called Queer Cumbia. And they were doing something there as well. But then we came along with Cumbia Cartel, Oakland Familia. And we started even making it even more. It's out there. It's out there. It's, it's a big movement that's happening in the Bay Area. And I feel it's only going to get bigger, hopefully. But let me give it up to some more bandas of the Bay Area for people to know. Because there's a lot of groups in the Bay Area. You know, there's La Gente, which is Rafael Sarria's band in San Francisco. There's Bicicletas por la Paz, which is my boy Adley's band. There's Bohemia Son, which is uh, my boy um, from Tambores de Colombia's group, uh, uh, Ramiro. There's Rhapsody Band, which is uh, my boy Fernando Checa, who actually started as our bass player in... Um, in uh, Calafia Armada, he was our first play bass player. Our bass player now is uh, Yusuf, who's a, a awesome bass player. And uh, there's Bangdata, which they do cumbia a little bit. And there's also Fulminante, Corazón Salvaje. There's your group, La Gran Puchica. You know, there's a lot of bands out here in the Bay Area. And it all kind of came from this, oh, Pasco Seco. Pasco Seco came from La Ceiba, which was our group. And, you know, they played with us, and then they formed Pasco Seco. So... 
I would say that, you know, the little movement that we started in 2013 created a bigger movement. You know what I mean? Um, we, we've done, we've innovated a lot of things that now other people are doing, and that's beautiful. You know what I mean? Tell me about, tell me about some of the lakeside sessions. Well, one thing is we, we used to get together before a lot in jam at, at Lake Merritt, and uh, we, would, we would always have little jams there, cumbia jams, and we met a lot of musicians through there. That's where I met Alberto, that's where I met Huero Huira, Micael, I met Angel there, and... Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of mu- a lot of good musicians came out of La Ceiba, you know what I mean? Me, you know, Huero Huido came from there, Pasto Seco came from there, you came from there. La Gran Puchica. Yeah, La Gran Puchica came from there. So, yeah, you know, and I came from there. So, like I said, I'm a local Chicano from Oakland, California, a musician. Check out Calafi Armada on Facebook or La Ceiba Cumbia on Facebook. And uh, look out for our shows. I'm Jose Rivera from Oakland, California, a local Chicano cumbiambero. Shout outs go out to those who we've missed and to those who we're soon to meet. La Clandestina, Bombera de la Bahia, DJ Raw Beat, Soltron, Malagreña, Rasteria, The Fellas from La Diabla, Turbo Sonidero, all those in the Latinx Chicanx movement. Jerry Limon from Estilo Clothing, Jonathan the Lionheart, Maldito of Malditoria. For full circle on KPFA, this is David de la Gran. Thank you for listening. This is KPFA Community Power Radio. You're listening to our broadcast special on the musical tradition of cumbia, and you just heard about the movement of cumbia music unique to the Bay Area. Thank you, David, for this contribution. It's my pleasure. And I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to some of the shows that are taking place here in the East Bay, featuring some of these bands that you just heard about right now. First up, Oakland Familia and the Cumbia Cartel presents Fulminante, La Gran Puchica, Corazón Salvaje, playing live at La Estrellita at 446 East 12th Street in Oakland. There's also going to be card games and readings by Malditoria. DJ Rabid is going to be spinning his great music. And also the Pocho Poetry is going to be performed by Fried Ashlotel. This is taking place Saturday, July 15th at La Estrellita Restaurant. There's also another show taking place on July 21st at the Legionnaire. And this is the International Freak Out A Go-Go, presenting Cumbia en Vivo with Calafia Armada. There's going to be a whole bunch of DJs there. Special Lord B, Bobby Ganoush, Sina Morris, Eastside Chicana, Beto Soundway, this is all going to take place Friday, July 21st, 2017 at the Legionnaire Saloon, 2272 Telegraph Avenue in Oakland. Come out, experience the cumbia scene and vivo a todo color. Remember, that's July 15th at La Estrellita featuring La Gran Puchica, Corazón Salvaje, and Fulminante. Now... Let's groove over some selections from our local bands that were mentioned in the last segment. First up is Gente Morena by La Colectiva. México, la visita del primer presidente negro de la historia de Estados Unidos.
algo, tal vez el presidente Obama comió pichón. just experienced two of the Bay Area's veterano cumbia acts, La Colectiva and Aluna. Aluna played their song, La Mica. Next up, resident apprentice and emerging cumbia star, our own David de la Gran con La Gran Puchica and their song, Baila Gran Puchica. We are La Gran Puchica. <laughs> Baila, la gran botica, 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 baila, la gran botica,
for listening we are happy to present this theme for you and i am excited to be a part of this cumbia movement here in wichin the bay area we'll see you at the next show and around the block we hope to hear more about the evolution of this multicultural mix of styles and music here for cumbia the executive producer for full circle is miss m Our technical director is Free Will and Frank Sterling. Joy Moore is our production consultant. We've been your hosts, David de la Gran and Laura Chegaray. Thanks to Sylvia Torres for her support on this show. And thank you for joining us tonight on Full Circle. Stay tuned. La Onda Bajita is next. Attention KPFA listeners, our summer fun drive starts Tuesday, July 25th and goes until Friday, August 4th. During this time, we need your help to come down to our phone room and volunteer your time answering calls and taking pledges. No experience is necessary. The phone room opens Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 6.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. And on weekends, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Snacks, coffee, and tea will be provided. Please visit kpfa.org for more information about volunteering. See you there.